So today we are celebrating this very important auspicious occasion of the disappearance day of Srila Rupa Goswami Bad. So we hear from teachings of our Guru Varga, our dear Vaishnavas, about the importance of this occasion. Our Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, before he left this world, he called all of his intimate disciples, especially missionaries who were engaged in the service of that transcendental cause of Lord Chaitanya. And he recommended to them that they should all take shelter of the lotus feet of Srila Rupa and Raghunath and offer their lives in the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that line of Sri Rupa and Raghunath, in the mood of Sri Rupa and Raghunath, as well as follow the practice taught as well as shown by these Goswamis. Adhadanastrinam dhante idam yache puna puna shrimad rupa padam boja dulisha janmani janmani. This verse is very important for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It said that holding a straw between our teeth, adhadanastrinam dhante, this is a symbol of our complete surrender and humility. Adadanastrinam dhante idam yache means I am praying puna puna again and again. Srimad rupa padamboja for those beautiful, effulgent, divine lotus feet of Sri Rupa. Duli shad janmani janmani, life after life, I am praying for the particle of dust of those lotus feet to fall upon my head. The reason this verse is very important is for us to, in due course, come to understand the gravity of that position where Sri Rupa Goswami Pad is present. It's easy to take these things lightly, but in doing so, we lose out in the opportunity to actually come to that place where we can actually receive that transcendental wealth. In English, we have a saying, you should not cast pearls before swine. You've heard that saying? What does it mean? This is not discrimination against pigs. The point is that they cannot appreciate or gain the benefit from this. Therefore, Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada is talking first, Adadanastrinam Dhante. First, we develop appreciation for what is that gift that is being offered. And then we develop humility, knowing that actually on our own merit, we cannot reach it. We think we can, perhaps, in life, we think we can achieve these things. But this is a gift that is imparted from the realized soul to the, not just the sadhaka, there are many practitioners. You would call this the realized disciple, the realized master. Realized means what? Prabhupada has been talking about that. Self-realization means Realization of one's relationship with Krishna, that is self-realization. This is not some light thing. We think of Krishna, oh, Krishna is beautiful in blue, or sham. This is Krishna. Realization of something is very different from an idea of something. So how can we achieve that position of true realization and moreover engagement? 
direct participation. That is that wealth of the heart of the Guru Varga that they are transferring to the disciple who becomes eligible for that. Should the Trivikram Goswami Maharaj would say, we should learn to deserve something. What does it mean? What is the requisite practice? If we look at the practice of Buddhists, for example, they are very rigorous in their sadhana. If you look at the Buddhist ashrams, for example, their sadhana is impeccable. Many similar ashrams, depends on the place, but the traditions, they have so much respect for the masters and the tradition that is giving this knowledge, not only the knowledge, but the access, the entrance into that sacred realm. And so it is beholden upon us also if we desire to one day receive that dust of the lotus feet of Rupa Manjari on our head, then we must approach this as the most sacred wealth, spiritual wealth in this whole world. Not this whole world, this whole cosmic creation. Not this whole cosmic creation. Any time, any place, this is the pinnacle of all the conceptions of the Godhead, of all the possible attainments for the soul. This is a higher attainment than becoming of the consciousness of God. There are four kinds of liberation and a fifth also, but the I am God consciousness, this is much beyond that. The I am part of everything consciousness, that is much beyond. This is, this is considered insignificant. And beyond that, you can actually become like a form of God. You can have a planet like God's. You can be in that. There's so many possibilities. You can rule like Indra in heaven. You can become Lord Brahma and create a universe. But for the devotees, this is all considered insignificant. Diyamanam nagrananti. They do not accept these. Even if Krishna or God tries to give you this boon, the devotees will not accept. It's not because this is a low thing. It's because they are tasting something so much higher. This is a very high thing. And yet there's something so much higher than this so-called very high thing. Not so-called, very high thing. Advaita Vadis who realize that they are part of this entire existence and the universe is all part of expansion of God and they've developed that God consciousness. Krishna says they're also very dear. They're also very advanced. But what does it mean to be entering into that Nikunj? You can go around and open it. You can open it, Vrinda. No problem. You have to unlock. No problem. Hare Krishna. So it is the instruction of our dear Prabhuji to try to present this conception in a way that is not meant for our community, congregation, or society, but for seekers and for spiritualists and for those who appreciate or are interested in Sri Krishna and Srimati Radhika. So therefore we have to present this in a way that is first giving understanding, not even understanding, but more of like a far off appreciation of the level that is being presented of this, the level, the, the height of this or the magnitude of that opportunity. That's why Sri Rupa Goswami Pad, when he glorified Mahaprabhu, he said, Anar Pita Charim Chirat Karunaya Vatirna Kalo. What does it mean? Anar Pita Chirim Chirat Karunaya Vatirna Kalo. You know this verse, Brinda? It's an important verse. It means that what Mahaprabhu came to give, Unata Udvala Rasam Svabhakti Shriyam, 
had not been available for millions and billions and billions of years. First of all, understand that. And then we can think of what is that thing that Mahaprabhu came to give. We should understand what was there before Mahaprabhu and what was different after Mahaprabhu. So if we're saying, oh, Bhakti, Mahaprabhu gave Bhakti Yoga. Yes? There was no Bhakti Yoga in India before Mahaprabhu? Yes, there was Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is part of Vedic tradition. Bhagavad Gita describes Bhakti Yoga, chapter 12. And all the Gita is also ultimately, chapter 18 is describing Bhakti Yoga, chapter 2 from text 39.4 is describing Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is present. That means the idea of devotion to God is present and the process to achieve realization of God is present. So that is not anarpita charim chirat karunaya vatirna kalo samarpaitum unato jala rasam svabhakti shriyam. What is it that is that thing that specifically Mahaprabhu gave that was not available before? We have to understand that. We could say kirtan, Mahaprabhu gave kirtan. We say sankirtan aikapita ro. Mahaprabhu is the father of kirtan. Yes? This nam sankirtan movement. Specifically, but what Sankirtan Aikapitaro? Kirtan was present. Kirtan is also part of Vedic tradition. Chapter 12, uh, Krishna says, Satatam Kirtayanto Mam Yatantascha Dridavrata Nama Shantachayam Yuktam. Srimad Bhagavatam says, Nama Sankirtanam Yasya Sarva Papra Pranashanam. End of Srimad Bhagavatam says, Nam Sankirtanam Yasya. You should perform Nam Sankirtan. That means chanting of the holy names. Chanting the names of God. All the scriptures will teach about this. So Nam Sankirtan was present. Many great saints who are, who are lovers of God were completely absorbed in the chanting of God's names according to their relationship. This was present. That is not Samarpaitum Unutu Jala Rasam Svabhakti Shriyam. These are all ingredients that Mahaprabhu gave to help us as part of our sadhana to achieve our ultimate prayojan, the ultimate goal. They are not the prayojan, not the ultimate goal. They were there before. So there are other things also similarly like that. Mahaprabhu taught about the soul, the science of self-realization, that is the goal of life. Sounds like a good thing, right? Self-realization. The Upanishads didn't teach self-realization. I wasn't there before. I'm not making light of these things. I'm saying these things are very difficult to achieve, very difficult to comprehend. Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, many hear of the soul and are amazed. Many read about the soul and are amazed. Many cannot even comprehend after hearing, but yet they are amazed. This is a very amazing topic. Yes? That's not amazing? To understand that I am eternal, I was never born, I will never die, I am ever youthful, I am primeval, I cannot be harmed by any weapon, burnt by any fire, drowned, I cannot be hurt in any hurricane, nothing can harm me, I am the eternal immortal soul, that is not, we should not make light of this. We should understand these are all foundational principles but yet, Mahaprabhu did not come to give this self-realization. That is all included in the package. Within one dollar, 50 cents are there, 25 cents are there, dime is there, nickel is there, a penny is there, everything is there, 99 cents is there. But what is that extra special thing? That is Samarpaitum Unutujla Rasam Svabhaktishriyam, what Mahaprabhu came to give. So then, when we understand what Mahaprabhu came to give, we should understand how he gave it. Something I was saying earlier today. Guru can only give what they have. So Mahaprabhu is our Jagad Guru. He is also praying for the service of Srimati Radhika. Then how can he grant it? He can give you? Mahaprabhu will say, oh... 
you can become the maid servant of Shrimati Radhika. Mahaprabhu will give you this. He will give instruction to Srila Rupa Goswami. Say, oh, this person is qualified. You should give them some shelter and some mercy. And if you see them fit, then you should give them entrance into this. So those who are followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in our Gaudiya Vaishnav, we say, what does it mean to be a Gaudiya Vaishnav? Rinda, what does it mean to be a Gaudiya Vaishnav? We are Gaudiya Vaishnavs. What does that mean? Really, truly, Gaudiya Vaishnav means in that line of Swarup Rupanuga. Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami and Srila Rupa Goswami. The Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is the authorized biography of Lord Chaitanya, where is it from? The notes of Srup Damodar, as well as Muradi Gupta and others from his childhood pastimes, from his sannyas pastimes, but especially the mood and the heart, the desire. Because a biographer, is, it's, it's said that the world is colored by your perception. So again, we see that. Many people think of Mahaprabhu in many different ways. Mahaprabhu is this, Mahaprabhu is that. Why? Atmavan manyate jagat. You see the world as you are. So therefore, Mahaprabhu doesn't want to teach. Many people think, oh, Mahaprabhu is for this, Mahaprabhu is for that, Mahaprabhu is this. But what is Mahaprabhu's own heart's desire? What is he himself coming to taste? And who is giving that? So therefore, Swarup Damodar Goswami was his very close friend who knew his heart, what he wanted to give. But there's different, there are different personalities. It's one thing to know someone's heart. It's another to be able to perfectly express it and present it. And also to have the experience. Something I was talking again, we had a Zoom class today about Rupa Goswami. There's a difference between giving a teaching and bringing someone into that realm. Like someone can say, okay, we should become maid servants of Shimati Radhika. Now we'll just present it. Yes, this is the goal. This is the teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is what he offered that was not present before. Bhakti Ras, the understanding of all these relationships with Sri Krishna, actually self-realization, meaning realization of your relationship with Krishna in a different mood, like a parent, like a friend, or like a beloved. But even beyond that, Bhagavatam describes how to become a gopi, but does not describe how to be the maid servant of Srimati Radhika. It gives some hint, some indication. It says some gopis were happy seeing the footprints of this gopi. And some recognized them. This means the manjuris. When Krishna was with Srimati Radhika and they were searching, the gopis were searching, they found these footprints and they thought, some thought, who is this other gopi? More fortunate than us, Anaya Radita Nunam Bhagavan Haridishwara. Who is that? Who has perfectly loved that Govinda Krishna and received his love, and that he has taken her, even leaving us aside? Who is that? But some gopis saw, oh, I know that person. And when Krishna returned from the Rasa dance, some gopis were more forward with Krishna, some were more contrary, separate. There is some indication there, but it's very hidden. But who is Rupa Goswami? Rupa Goswami broke open the chest and began to distribute this, even though it was very protected, guarded. But yet, through his followers in his line, his, in that succession of the kinkaris of Srimati Radhika, this is being distributed widely, especially our Gurudev. Gurudev took this, all these jewels. Gurudev had this potency, these Chintamani jewels. He would go everywhere and he would distribute them. And he would manifest more and more. And that now people have that fortune to think very simply, oh, I will become Nate Sura Shrimati Radhika. Such a, such a beyond conception. There's no word for it, but beyond everything else, beyond this universe, beyond the spiritual universe, is the highest realm of the highest dimension where God himself is with his beloved, even breaking all material morality, all conception of right and wrong. 
Gurudev was talking about this. He said, Parakya Rasa, without Rup Goswami, none of the Sampradayas would accept Parakya Rasa. Parakya Rasa means Radha Krishna, their love is beyond any material form and function and code and morality. Their love is f complete spiritual freedom. Love itself reigns supreme. Not, it, it is even beyond the bondage of marriage. This is the point. It breaks all this. Pure love. Causeless devotion. Causeless love. Pati sutanvaya bratri bandivan antivilangyate. People say, oh, where is this? It's in the Bhagavatam. But yet, this understanding of what this is, it said, without Rupa Goswami, this was not, very, not being accepted. Gurudev said, Rupa Goswami established it so powerfully, so beautifully, so, with so much authority of the scripture. But it's like the scripture is there, but you, cannot, you don't have the eyes to see it. It's hidden in plain sight, but Rupa Goswami established it, revealed it, and manifested it so powerfully, Gurudev said all the other Sampradayas had to bow down to it. They all bowed down to this conception. They said, okay, we accept this as supreme. We may not adopt, we may not, ex we may not follow, but we accept this as supreme. This is Srila Rupa Goswami Pad's contribution. But more than that, to establish a pranali, pranali means a method and a line by which you can follow and receive the grace to start to taste some initial appreciation or glimpse of what this is. Therefore, our Gurudev would say this is something that is very sacred. You have to understand that this is very sacred, that if I want to one day achieve that position, what is the cost? This is not such a simple thing. Therefore, in Chaitanya Charita Amrita, it's described in many places the glories of the Goswamis. Mahaprabhu asked, how are they living? Also, Raghunath asked Goswami when he was in Puri, how is he living? To show that this is not some light thing. Like we hear about the sages and the great seers of India practicing austerities. The Goswamis are no less. We hear about the life of the Goswamis, Vairagya, Patanera Reka, their renunciation, their detachment from material affairs. So great. Said, Kabi Channa, Kabi Wobimana. Sometimes they would eat some chickpeas to maintain their life, and sometimes even that they would not eat. Sometimes they would take a, a palm full of buttermilk a day just to maintain their life. And day and night, what are they doing? Only absorbed in chanting the name of Srimati Radhika. Nothing else. This is Rupa Nuga. Gorkhshadas Babaji Maharaj, if you were to, what was the life of Gorkhshadas Babaji Maharaj? He was so disinterested from material affairs that he locked himself in a latrine. He had no interest whatsoever. People would try to get him out. And they would say, come out. We'll give you a beautiful palace. He said, I know. You'll give me a nice place to live. And then he'll bring many people to ask me many mundane questions. Mundane questions. I said, I'm not interested. I prefer the stench of the latrine the st than the stench of association with materialistic people. <laughs> and day and night, what was he chanting? Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. Kotai go prima moi, Radhe, Radhe. Dekodiyo prananata, Radhe, Radhe. Tomar kangal, tomai dhake, Radhe, Radhe. This is called bhajan. So they were so absorbed in this that through that, this wealth then can come into the heart. When will this come into the heart? As we said, pearls before swine, they will not give that. They may talk about it in a distant way on occasion, but for you to actually have that come within your heart, this is called tapasya, austerity. What is the greatest austerity? I say, control your mind. This box up here. We don't know. We have no on-off switch. We have no filter. 
we have no firewall any sound anything comes inside and we fill it up with that garbage therefore gokshtas babaji mar said i will stay in a latrine i'm not interested yadate moha kalilam budir vyarti tarishyati tara kantasite vidyam shruta vasya shrutasya cha 252 i believe let's double check yes 252 <laughs> this is the sadhana bhagavad gita is giving us the sadhana the prayojan is being taught after when your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard of this world this position of sh- achieving that manjuri bhav is nothing of this world so the goswami's practice sadhan krishna kirtana gana nartana paro sankhya purvaka nama ghana nati bi kala vasani krito nidra har vihar kadi vijito chatyanti dino chayo how did they live their life you study that and think one day how can i perform bhajan one day Nartandasta Kursings. E de hayanti ma kale Raki po shri Jamunara jale Jai radhe shi Govinda bhole Bhashi bhogho When will that day come? That I will lay my body along the river Jamuna? when i'm ready to give up my life and singing singing only radhe govinda radhe govinda i'll very happily give up this body we're all absorbed in the affairs of life according to our responsibilities and some of this must be done but haridas takur had no responsibilities we could think oh haridas takur lazy fellow all he's doing is sitting and chanting why isn't he doing some work People think like that. I'm telling you. Sadhus have nothing to do. They're just sitting and chanting, wasting and depending on the resources of others. Lazy fellows. They don't understand what is work. It says work is bondage. You want freedom? Then you understand what is bhakti, what is niskam, what is freedom from desire. then you can chant like we see our vaishnav in vrindavan he does not do seva every day is chanting to lakhari nam there's a prakti pramod puri goswami maharaj quote bakshi maharaj puri maharaj said someone was telling him oh i chant like 16 rounds a day and he said what do you do with the rest of your day <laughs> he couldn't understand it you don't want this thing love this when you start to the thing is when you imagine you taste something and it's so sweet and amazing and you just want to get another taste of it and then you become fully absorbed in this everything else loses you lose interest over time so bhakti is a natural process we have to give it its own time and space but we should understand what does it mean to enter into the line of the goswamis and to follow the goswamis this is not a frivolous cheap subject matter they should be approached with the utmost respect honor and if you want to enter into that path we must walk in the footsteps of those who have gone ahead of us on that path mahajan jena katapanta the vaishnavas we are very lucky to follow the vaishnav their life they follow impeccable sadhana impeccable practice with so much focus for them even the things that for us seem okay what's the harm play a little sports do a little game this and that what's the harm for them it's like oh why are you wasting your human form of life <laughs> it's such an important opportunity such a rare gift nirdeha madhyam sulabham sudurlabham plavam sukalpam guru karnadaram maya nikulena navashvateritam puman viraji pashugnat you're destroying yourself because you don't understand this life is passing like a dream but yet the human form of life is a boat and it can cross over the ocean of samsara 
material existence, birth and death, if you use it wisely and take shelter of the favorable winds of Sadhu Sangha, Harinam, and Bhajan. So Rupa Goswami Pad, many beautiful stories of his life. Really, Gurudev every year would have five days of discussions on the glories of Rupa Goswami and he would invite scholars from all over the holy places. They would all speak for hours and hours and hours of the glories of Srila Rupa Goswami. Without Srila Rupa Goswami, you should think that we have no Sampradaya. We don't have Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya without Rupa Goswami. You should understand that. Then you can read Bhakti Rasamrita, Sindhu, Ujvalinima, and all these books, Vidagda Madhav, Lid Madhav. But really, you should understand that Srimati Radhika herself gave that permission and her desire that this be distributed. Otherwise, there's no question of Rupa Goswami giving this. This is something to understand. What does it mean to be a Manjari? There's not the slightest deviation from the desire of your Swamini. You are Tadatmik, completely one at heart with her desire. So, therefore, Krishna cannot force this to be distributed. Samarpayetum unatu jalarasam svabhakti shriyam, that wealth of that svabhakti shriyam, that fulgent beauty of that opportunity to serve, is coming from who? That is coming from Srimati Radhika, not from Krishna. Krishna requests, Krishna begs, and she gives permission, and then Rupa Manjari will give this conception. But even that in a very guarded, protected way, not open. Gurudev was saying that we should understand Sri Rupa Manjari, her relationship with Srimati Radhika is more intimate than any of the Sakis. What she will speak with Rupa Manjari, she will not even speak with Krishna or Lalita Vishak or any of other friends. So the moods of Srimati Radhika that Rupa Manjari knows, no one knows. They've also said that Mahaprabhu spoke with Ramananda Roy. Ramananda Roy Sambhad is one of the wealths, the jewels of Chaitanya Charitamrita, the life of Lord Chaitanya. But there, Gurudev said, where is this Manjari Bhav openly described and the path to achieve it openly given? It's not there. Mahaprabhu's other teachings, South India, some idea of Braja Bhakti Ras is given, especially focuses on Braja Bhakti Ras, the mood of love in Braj, beyond the mood of opulence of God, or God in this, I, we think of God as something distant, right? You think of God as something far away that maybe you get to see once in a while and offer a pranam to, offer obeisance to. But Mahaprabhu's thought about God in the form of, oh, you can wrestle and fight as his friend. You can be like a parent and breastfeed and nurture and love or this mood of the Brajagopis he described. But description and entrance is very different. Right? We can read the Bhagavad Gita, but imagine being Arjuna. What's the difference? So we read about the pastimes of Mahaprabhu. We read about the pastimes of Radhakrishna. But most people would think this is just an idea. Most people think, oh, it's only some idea. But no, our line is saying, you can be right there. This is beyond reading. We don't want to read about it. We want to, go, we want to transcend the concept of, you know, I don't need to read a book about Vrindavan. I live with Vrindavan. I know Vrindavan. We talk every day. I don't need to read a book about you. So that's what the Goswamis are offering. You don't need to read Radha Tattva. You get to massage our lotus feet. <laughs> then you understand all the tattvas intuitively. All the tattvas being revealed. What is the tattva of her mood, her feeling, and how you can serve? <laughs> yes. Every day we're praying all these verses. But, and this is the path. But what is being offered, what Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada said is, no, you should follow the path of Rupa and Raghunath. Rupa Goswami showed us in his writings how to follow this path of Rag Bhakti. He's, he's not going to call it Rupa Nuga Bhakti himself. <laughs> Raghunathas Goswami and the other Goswamis and the others in the line described it like that. Be described. 
विष्णुस्मरम जनम चस्तन निजा समनीतम तत्कृतारतशासुर कुर्यद्वासम ब्रजे सदा And all these verses he described, if you read Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he describes it there. And then if you read Raghunath Asuka Swami, if you want to be a father of Rupa Goswami, then you take shelter of Jeev Goswami and Raghunath Asuka Swami. Have you read his works? No problem, it's okay. It's good. Don't read. Here. Be patient. Spiritual life is not a race. You cannot race to the finish line in spiritual life. Spiritual life is a process of receiving mercy. And that much you are ready for it, that much you develop, it's all about the development of transcending your egoic self, trying to achieve, trying to grasp something. We're trying to hold something, even a conception, and bring it into ourselves. But really, it's, we have to go beyond that mentality and simply, like we say, Simply fall at the feet and beg. This is our process. So therefore we'll hear Rupa Goswami. If we want to understand the glories of Rupa Goswami, we take shelter of Raghunath Das Goswami. We take shelter of Nartam Das Thakur. He wrote Priya Swarupe, Dhaita. This is, I believe, also Kavi Karnapur, but Rupa Goswami, Nartam Das Thakur. It's many prayers glorifying Rupa Manjari and Rupa Goswami. Nartam Das Thakur, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, our Guru Dev, all our Guru Varga describes, Swami Prabhupada describes, we're all followers of Srila Rupa Goswami. In the first verse of Bhagavatam, it says, Ya Ali Kavaye, the original poet, the original teacher in our line is Rupa Goswami. This is described also. In, in Guru Dev's introduction to Ramananda Ray Sambari, describes this first verse of Bhagavatam, Janma Dasirita, in reference to Mahapur. He says, Who is this Ali Kavaye? That is, Rupa Goswami. He says, just like Lord Brahma received this knowledge from Krishna, Rupa Goswami is giving us this knowledge in our line. So he is our Adi Kavi. Without Rupa Goswami, we have no Sampradaya. We have no line without Rupa Goswami. How important is Rupa Goswami, therefore? Therefore, all the Acharyas in our line, they always pray to Rupa Goswami. If we look, Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, before he departed this world, he said, please sing to me. Shirupa Manjari Pada, Se Mora Sampada, Se Mora Bhajana Pujan. And all his disciples, before they depart, they always meditate on this. What you meditate upon at the time of death means what you meditate upon during your life. Their whole life they're meditating on this. Their whole life is trying to fulfill the desire of their Manjari Seki, who they are under the guidance of. That's their whole life. The whole function of their life, the whole leela of their life is simply an endeavor to please their Swamini. How do you please Swamini? By pleasing your Guru Saki. That's it. That self-realization will be, we can realize ourself. But that doesn't mean you get entrance into the Kunj. We can achieve self-realization and still stay outside. That's why we want to go beyond self-realization. That's why it's dependent on mercy. Our process is dependent on mercy because what do we pray? Raghunath Daska Swami prays, Shri Rupa Manjari Kararchita Pada Padma Gostendra Nandana Bujar Pita Mastakaya Amodata Kanaka Gauri Padara Vindai Sambahanani Sanaka Istava Kim Karishye This is not a process, not something you can barge in and say, I will do this. Look at Jai Vijay. They could not even enter by Kunta. Even though they were completely perfected yogis, self-realized souls, they could not even go past the gate to Vaikuntha, the spiritual abode of Lord Vishnu. But yet here, <laughs> Raghunath Goswami is saying, Shri Rupa Manjari Karai Chita Pada Padma Gostendra Nandana Bujarpita Mastakaya Ha Modata Kanaka Gauri Pada Samvahanani Sanakaista Vakim Karishe. When will you give me the remnants of your service to Shumati Radhika? Where is that abode? It's said that Shri Krishna, his Angsa, Kala, Vibhanangs, all his different expansions, the different Purush avatars. Karvadakshay, Shirudakshay, Karvadakshay Vishnu, and 
Ananda Shesh, all these different avatars coming from Lord Baladev also. But what is that? Krishna in his highest abode where he is relishing at every moment Parakya Ras. Parakya means, Parakya Ras is such a situation, means this paramour love that at every moment you're tasting ever fresh sweetness and beauty. Every moment. You can imagine? Every moment. Gurudev talks a lot about Swakya and Parakya. So we'll talk about that in future days. But in essence, this is Krishna's own playground, Krishna's own highest abode for Krishna and for Srimati Radhika exclusively. And Rupa Manjali there is serving Srimati Radhika. And Raghunath is praying, when will that time come that you will indicate with your eyes? And through your glance of mercy, having accepted me, you'll give me a chance to take the remnants of your service by massaging Srimati Radhika's lotus feet. How can we go to that? place to that attainment now it seems like a far off dream right very far off dream we're lucky we get chance to serve takaji because that's real we're lucky but otherwise this feels very far away right but yet it is not far away but the realization of this position this opportunity this is a lifetime of sadhana Lifetimes, not a lifetime. We don't know how many lifetimes we've already been endeavoring. How many lifetimes forward we have to endeavor. But this opportunity, we think, oh, it's a simple thing. What does it mean to massage feet? Right? But this is, a, this is, a, this is an idea of an intimate mood, of a relationship. Why? Vaishnavs don't want anyone to touch their feet. Many Vaishnavas, they will not let you touch their feet. Stay away from my feet. Don't touch my feet. Don't think this is something they're waiting. Oh, in line, everyone's going to come and touch their feet. Srimati Radhika doesn't have a, a waiting line of sadhakas who can come and touch her feet. You cannot even see her feet. In Vrindavan, one day a year can you see the feet of Srimati Radhika in all the temples. In all the temples of Vrindavan, you can see her lotus feet one day a year on her deity form. That is the day of Gopastami when she dresses as a cowherd boy so that she can join Krishna grazing cows in the forest, grazing the calves. One day a year you can see the feet from a distance, not touch. And, and Raghunath Swami is praying. Gurudev said that in his prayers, whenever he's in that meditative state, then he is never in the form of Raghunath Swami. He's always as Rati Manjari or Tulsi. He has two different names. He's never as Raghunath. Why? Chodata Purushabhiman Kinkari Hoilo Gokulakan. To go to that position. That's why our spiritual path and other paths may differ. Some paths teach you to climb up and achieve something. Our path is, our self is complete. Our process is getting rid of all the things that are not the real self. Anartini Vritti, Cheta Dharpana Marjanam, cleaning the mirror, cleaning the consciousness, cleaning the ego. Ridding ourselves of all this Purush Abhiman, this mentality, I am the doer, I am the controller, I am God, right? In subtle form, I am baby God. There's Papa God and I am baby God. All this baby God mentality has to go away. And Kinkari Hoilo Gokula Khan. I'm simply a maid servant of Swami Shimati Radhika. That is my identity. Bhakti Thakur says this, I, this is such a powerful thing that what does he say? Radhika Dasi Jadi Hoya Bhimana Shigrai Milai Tabo Gokula Kana Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the seventh Goswami, says that this conception, if you can embrace this, it's so powerful. Radhika Dasi Jadi Hoya Bhimana This self conception, I am the maid servant of Srimati Radhika. Very quickly, you achieve. No. Krishna comes running behind you. You don't have to find Krishna, search for Krishna. Krishna will come to you. So what does it mean to have this conception? We should understand this is not something we can forcefully, we cannot break into the vault and steal Radhadasyam. 
cannot break into the vault and capture this mood. This is something that is something. Fool's gold. You may capture fool's gold. It means the semblance, the reflection, the appearance, but not the actual substance. Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada says, if you want to achieve this, then you must develop the mood that I am not the subject. He says, I am the servant of, and I am the potency. Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada writes an article about this. We're all subjects in life, right? We are the subject. I. When I wake up in the morning, it is I. When I go to bed at night, it is I. Everything is based on I consciousness. I. But Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada says, if we want to become the maidservant of Srimati Radhika, we go beyond this I consciousness. We're trying to serve her consciousness, Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness means serving her f- a focus on the beloved Sri Krishna. And you become lost in this. It's almost something that cannot be spoken, but you become completely immersed in the focus on the pleasing your beloved and the beauty of your, and the sweetness and the rasa that, that you relish in that, that the sense of I is like an afterthought. You don't try to throw it away. You don't even have to think of, oh, I have to have less ego. It's never, you never cross your mind. They say humility doesn't mean thinking less of your, thinking of yourself, you know, that you are lesser. It's thinking of yourself less. This is humility. And so this is the highest part of it. Real humility means that my life is only, what does it mean? Radhika dasi jadi hoya biman shigurami laitava gokula khan. What does that mean? We think, oh, I am the maidservant Srimati Radhika, but yet in that mentality, I am the subject. This is what Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada says. I am the maidservant of Srimati Radhika. It's I. I am the maidservant of Srimati Radhika. This is our syntax, Western civilization syntax, Eastern also now. Everything is based on I. I am God. Yesterday I was speaking in the Gita. I didn't get time to cover this topic, but I was going to call it how to go beyond the I am God generation. Everyone wants to be God, and this is spirituality. It's called spiritual self-indulgence. We're telling ourselves a fancy story that makes ourselves feel good. But it's layering ourselves thicker and thicker and thicker with this covering of the ego. Radhika dasi jadi. Radhika. How can we develop consciousness of her service? So much to the point of that it becomes like what? Shri Krishna virahe radhika radhasa amito sahite nari jugala milan sukira karan jivana charite pari jivana charite pari This is not I am consciousness. This is Shri Krishna virahe radhika radhasa I cannot tolerate my swaminis pain of separation from her beloved Krishna. If I could somehow arrange their meeting, I would happily give my life to that. I would give up my life happily in a moment for that. This mood was there. You can find some book about this before Mahaprabhu. Brishabhanu Sutta Charana Shevane Hoi Boye Palyadhasi This was there? This was not there. Radhara Sukh, Krishna Raja Sukh, Radhara Sukh. To understand that Krishna is happy, if Srimati Radhika is happy, therefore I will try to please Srimati Radhika. And Kabuna Hiribokami, I have no desire for any separate meeting with Krishna. Why? Because I'm completely offered in that. It said, without being Sevak, you cannot understand the sweetness of being Sevak. Cannot understand. What does it mean? What is the sweetness of being a sevak, of being a das? People think being a servant of God is a very uh, unfortunate situation. If you tell most people you have to surrender and you become a servant, oh, it's very painful. The idea is very painful. We like pull back from it. I have to be a servant. I have to surrender. 
I have to give up my ego, I have to develop humility. What is this crazy philosophy? But what is the sweetness? Krishna is never thinking you are a servant. Radharani is never thinking you are a servant, but you are thinking, ah, oh, I want to serve you. And it's, it's said that without understanding, you cannot realize. Without realizing, you cannot understand. Without realizing, you can never understand. What does it mean to be a sevak? My life is to please you. Why? Because it, when you taste that love, that's why it's something that is received. Relationship is always something you receive. I will achieve self-realization and I will achieve the state of God consciousness and I will be God and then others will serve me. This is our spirituality in the West. Not all, but a lot of it. Right? It's based on I. I am the subject. It's all about me being happy. But that's not relationship. That's I. Self-realization. I. And who wants to associate with that? Then you get to be alone as God. In leadership terms, they say, you're not a leader if you don't have followers. So in other words, being alone as God means you're not God. There's no such thing as an alone God. He's always with his beloveds, always with his associates. There's no Krishna without the bhaktas. There's no Krishna without the devotees. Right? So in the same way, people who have this idea, I will become, I will be, I will be, I, I, I. Aham. It said ahankar. What is ahankar? This is the root problem why we are suffering in samsara. Because based on ahamkar, I making, that's what it means. We're eye making constantly. Aham God. And the other one is Aham and mine. I and mine. This is why we're in Sangsara. Aham God. But how can we go from that to Radhika Dasi Jadi Hoya Biman? This is our process. What does it mean to be Das Dasi? That's why when we take initiation, we all become Das, right? Das, Dasi. This is, a, this is the ultimate rebellion, the ultimate revolution, to accept that I am Das, and to find joy in that position. What does it mean? To, you know how joyful Hanuman is? Hanuman is so joyful, you cannot imagine the joy in Hanuman's heart. Why? Because the, his Prabhu, Ram, is always in his heart. He's always relishing his relationship with his Prabhu. Bhakti Yoga is about relationship, not about becoming a big I that everyone else has to serve and be around, that no one wants to be around. A lone God. That's why Mayavad means I want to become God alone, and everyone's part of me, and we're all God together alone, because nobody wants to be with each other. But Bhakti Yoga is about relationship. Relationship means you have to attract that thing. Because this is, parakya means ultimately it is, what parakya really means is, parakya ras means no one can take it by force. That's parakya rasa. Parakya ras means it is completely that pure relationship. People think parakya ras is impure. This is only showing their own foolishness. Parakya ras means the purest form of relationship. That is parakya ras. Because I'm purely offering myself and my beloved is fully offering themselves. And every moment we're apart, we're dying to be together. It's pure, pure. So the idea is that when you take shelter of a pure soul, pure Vaishnav, their entire being is simply radiating pure love. That pure love they are relishing, like Lord Hanuman. What is Hanuman? Hanuman Prabhu. Sevya sevaka bhava vinuna bhava tariya iha urugara bhajiya ram bada pangaja sabakaja bishar. Panuma never said worship me separately from Ram. He never says. People try to worship Hanuman. He said, Why are you trying to worship me? Worship Ram. I am also worshiping Ram. Sevya, if you try to take away the seva mood from Hanuman, he said, This is the greatest assault against me. Ravan was easy, Kumbhakarna was easy. All the rakshasas were easy to fight, but you want to take me away from my Savior, Lord Ram? Oh, that is the real enemy. 
is what is the sweetness of that seva? What is the sweetness of love? And what is the manifestation of love? Seva. Seva is the active ingredient of love. Love, that's why bhakti yoga means two things. What is bhakti yoga? Service and love. Bhav and kriya. That's, serve love means what? Bhakti yoga. This is bhakti yoga ashram. Bhakti has two parts. Bhav, the mood or love itself. And seva, the action. Serve love means bhakti yoga. Bhav kriya. So those two things can never be divided. If you take one away from the other, both have no meaning. So what does it mean to be das? To be das means to have love. That is what it means to be das. So what comes first? We've talked about this before a little bit. We'll end in a minute here. What comes first? When you're a baby, you be a baby. No problem. Don't worry and don't try to, we have to stop trying to become and stop trying to achieve. We're caught up in this cycle of we're not good enough, so we have to achieve something. We have to come to this platform of spiritual knowledge. We have to achieve this level. We have to conquer over this. We have to conquer over an art of reading. We have to. We are stuck in this doer mentality, subject mentality and achievement mentality. We have to transcend achievement. We have to transcend the need for recognition, transcend the need for significance, for status, for all these things and simply be Haribo. All these things are obstacles. In the beginning, okay, no problem. Maybe life. At a certain point, all that has to be thrown out. That's why Gurudev would say, oh, learn all these tattvas, but don't forget to forget them. Gurudev would say like that. You have to learn everything, but don't forget to forget. Because otherwise that will become a wall inhibiting you from achieving that real parakya rasa, which is the purest form of relationship. Beyond all conception of knowledge, there's just pure love. That pure love is its own source of infinite knowledge. All of your knowledge is limited. But when you have pure love, you are tapping into the source of unlimited rasa. And rasa manifests in unlimited varieties of engagement, which means practical knowledge. Yoga karmashu koshalam. Krishna says in chapter 2. Yoga karmashu koshalam. What is the perfection of yoga? The act, the sweetness of loving action. Perfection of bhakti yoga. So Rupa Goswami Pad, without... So how do we approach that path? That is what we're talking about. Radhika dasi jadi hoya viman shikramai laitava gokulakan. Because this is based on relationship, there's nothing you can achieve. Because it's based on relationship. It's something you can receive. We have to go from an achieving mindset to a receiving mindset. And in order to receive, what kind of quality should I nurture what quality should I nurture in my life that those who possess this, who have come into this world, who have that wealth in their heart, will be merciful, will see I'm ready for it, and then they will grant it, and I will receive it. We're all stuck in an achievement mentality. We need to learn to be receptionists. Please, welcome this in. We have to welcome these moods, these that's why in Bhakti Yoga, there's always this controversy. Is it something received or something achieved? Is Bhakti achieved or received? Rupa Goswami says, Nitta Siddha Krishna Prem Sadda Kabunai Shravanadi Sudha Chitta Koriya Udhai It is not achieved. It's not received. It is within. So there's something within inherent and there's something also that must be received. Those two ingredients are necessary. So this is the idea. The achievement is really the reception. The bestowal of grace. And so if we have that receiving mentality, what does that mean? Then we learn to gradually develop the qualities through which we become ready to receive these things. We shouldn't think Guru and Vaishnavas, they love us unconditionally. Parents love their children unconditionally. 
doesn't matter. That's why I was saying, don't think it's about becoming perfect or being perfect before you can receive this. No, the fact is that we are in an imperfect state. The Atma is perfect, but we are, we are striving for that highest relationship. So our nature now, we need something, fulfillment, but we cannot achieve it on our own without grace because otherwise we'd already have it. It's not something we can achieve. We must surrender and we pray. That's why we do kirtan. We pray. We pray for mercy. We learn to pray. That's why bhakti yoga, a lot of people can't really get with it. It's almost too, it's too soft. And you try to grasp it and it disappears. You try to achieve it and it disappears. It's gone. Then you become a professional devotee. Professional kirtaniya, a professional, but the essence is lost. We want the essence. We want to receive the essence. So what I'm humbly offering here is that if we want to progress in this path, you look at the relationship between Rupa Goswami and Jeev Goswami. For the slightest deviation, the slightest subject mentality, the sub slightest doer mentality entered as a lesson to us. And Rupa Goswami sent him away. This is the fact. Balabacha, we won't describe the names and details and so forth, but someone was challenging Rupa Goswami's writing. There's a whole story around it. I don't want to go into this long detail. People know the story. If they don't, then we'll, you can ask and we'll talk later. The point is that Jeev Goswami went to defend his guru and challenge this other person, say, you are wrong and he is right. Even this much was breaching the etiquette in the presence of his guru. He said, in front of your guru, you should not chastise, correct, or instruct anyone. So even in the act of defense, it's, I am the doer, I will defend the honor. It's very challenging. Gurudev said both are right in this case. Gurudev said both are right. He is defending his guru, and he doesn't want to be glorified. But on a, we should also think, am I on Jeev Goswami's level? That I am capable. Jeev Goswami went to the river and he spontaneously manifested beautiful verses and original Sanskrit verses glorifying Jamun and all these things. And who is this amazing scholar? And then they had a long discussion and he established the glory. First you have to think, am I qualified to establish the glory? Do I have that skill of Jeev Goswami that I can stand up and do like that? They say fools rush in while well, angels fear to tread. So we are not on that level of Jeev Goswami. And yet, Jeev Goswami did like this. And when he came back, Rupa Goswami said, leave. Leave the ashram. Why? You're trying to achieve Manjari Bhav. And yet you're like this, ferocious, wild, powerful person who can go and someone who is at that time, perhaps 40, 50 years senior, and guru of a large following. Vallabhachar is a great guru at that time. Hundreds of thousands of followers. And you're going to go and correct? Young boy? Fool? <laughs> so what does it mean to live the life of this, to become Das, Dasi? Really, we should understand one thing our Gurudev would say is that Das is an aspiration. Dasi is an aspiration. We aspire to become a servant. We are not so bold as to claim ourselves to be servants of Krishna. That's a very bold statement or a very foolish statement. We are either foolish or we are very arrogant to say, I am a servant of Krishna. Servant of Krishna means you have realized Krishna, you have realized your Atma, you have achieved the spiritual abode, you are there serving Krishna. You are Maya Das. First conquer over Maya. How can you be Krishna Das if you are Maya Das? How can you be Radha Dasi if you are Maya's Dasi? Both things cannot be done simultaneously. We aspire to be Krishna Das. We aspire to be Guru Das. I am servant of Guru. Such an arrogant claim. This is not the mood of the Kinkaris. This mood is so soft and gentle, more than the softest butter. 
That's why you hear the glories of the Acharyas, how they are. And yet they can be very strong. But this is once they are in that role and that service. But we want to go to that place. So really, it's, that's why they say, you know, you hear the stories of the Goswamis and how they approach Mahaprabhu. What is their mood? You hear the stories of Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami would walk on the hot sands on the shore of Puri barefoot. And he would come with full of blisters. Why? Because he was so humble, he didn't want to walk on the main street. Because the pandas there are Brahmins and he was serving Yavanas. So he was so humble that he would cause so much pain to himself because he didn't want to cause the slightest disturbance to anyone. Haridas Thakur was in the same mood. We see if you read the lives of the Goswamis and our great sages, what is the mood in their heart? You cannot imagine. You see the Vaishnavas, our Vaishnav and Vrindavan, for example. You cannot fathom the softness of their heart and their humility. People are criticizing. They think, yes, this is good. They should criticize me. I am, a, I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. Why? They have no ego. What does Mahaprabhu pray? Ainanda tunuja kinkaram patitang mang vishame bhavam buddha kripayani japada pankajas tita duli sadrishang mang vishnu. I am fallen in the ocean of samsara. I am so attached. Mahaprabhu said, Kama krodi nakra, that the sharks, the ferocious wild animals of lust, anger, greed, madness are always attacking me in life. I am always disturbed in life. All these things. How am I Krishna Das? How am I? Radharani's das, dasi. This is my aspiration. I am aspiring for this. And I am praying, oh, one day, Shriman, Rupa, Padam, Bhoja, Dulisha, Janmani, Janmani. Life after life, holding a straw between my teeth, bowing and praying, I am begging for you. One day, may you accept me. Ha Devi Kakubara Gadgara Yadyavacha. We want to achieve Radhadasyam. You need to learn to fall like a stick. And your voice should choke up. And again and again you should weep and pray and beg. That means you cannot do it artificially. Artificially means it's just a drama. Weeping and begging and crying again and again. Tavevasmi, tavevasmi, na jivami taya vinaiti vigyaya radhe tuam nayamam charanantike. I'll give up my life if you do not give me your mercy. We will not give up a meal. I <laughs> want to speak of our life. We have to be ready like that to the utmost extent. So, in conclusion, Baby mood is good. Humility is good. Baby steps are good. The parents don't tell the child you should grow up tomorrow. They love you unconditionally. They know it's a matter of development, of growth. But we have to understand the right recipe for success. That's the point. Where do we want to go and what is the recipe for success? How do we be in this mood of receiving mercy? rather than achieving it. How can we be in that mood as the servant of the potency, not the subject and the master? This is what Bhaktisant the Prabhupada taught. And this is something that we should hear about, but moreover, we should offer our pranam to this. We should offer our respects and our pranam, and gradually then, this wealth can enter our hearts, and we can possess this. We should understand this is already our property. Just how can we get to that point? It may be our property waiting for another million lifetimes. But it is our property. This is our inheritance. The parents want us to realize this inheritance and receive this inheritance. Right? They want us to receive this inheritance. So what should we do to get to that point? This is our prayer. Okay? What should we do to get to this point that they say, oh, I've been waiting to give this to you for so long. I've been just waiting for it to, giving it to give it to you. And I've seen you're very ready. Here it is. This is not something you can do a seven-day course or a one-month course or a two-month course or a one-year course or a five-year course. It may take one day. It may take one lifetime. But when you are ready, it will be yours.
because it already is. You just have to be ready to receive it. Okay? Panchakalpa, Tadivisikripa, Sindhivicha, Patitanam, Pavanibhyo, Vaishnavibhyo, and we'll do one quick bhajan, then we'll do Julan. Today is Rukhuswami's Tirubhav, so we'll do a little bit.